Battlebit is on the cusp of changing forever. Now, I know video titles like this err on the side of clickbait, but as I sit here looking at what we're about to talk about here today, yeah, the title has some accuracy to it. From a gameplay perspective alone, folks, this update is going to have some serious implications on how we play the game. G'day there once again, viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today, folks, we are talking about all of the gameplay alterations coming to the game in the next major update, and what they're going to mean for all of us as players of Battlebit Remastered. So guys, yeah, what was once an update limited to a scope of being just a sound design overhaul has quickly turned into something far greater. Something that, when you zoom out, really touches every element of the game and how it will play in the long run. Battlebit is genuinely going to feel, sound, and play like a brand new game when this major update actually releases. And depending on where you sit in the community and what your preferred playstyle is, it may actually impact your long-term interest in the game as well. But the question remains, why all of these changes now, almost a year after the game has launched into early access? And it's a fair question to ask, but thankfully we're starting to get some more information through these dev casts that the developers seem to still be doing. Oki has come out on these dev casts lately and admitted that the game, through its attempt to mix casual and milsim mechanics, is struggling. While it was a personal dream for Oki and his team to develop a game that interlaces the two and brings a hybrid experience to the space that was approachable, if you will, it just hasn't quite worked out that way, and it's actually created more frustration for any potential players that are coming to the game as they interacted with the game design for the first time. I think we can all agree that Battlebit right now sends inconsistent or incomplete information to the players in a firefight that they would come to expect from a first-person shooter game these days, especially one that plays like Battlebit Remastered as it does right now. The sprinkling of inspiration that milsim-like games have had on Battlebit has also, I think, exacerbated that problem as well. The chaotic nature of the game and the fact that there's just so much going on with so little info being provided back to you as the player has also not helped, and the rapid time to kill of the game also means that there's no scope for reacting to new threats as they emerge in the game, while there's just so much going on. Which leads us to one of the many changes that the developers are seeking to make with this next major game update. The time to kill of Battlebit Remastered is allegedly getting an increase across the board. Now, we don't know exactly how this is going to look mechanically as of yet, folks. Whether this be damage per shot for all weapons getting rebalanced around new bullet to kill numbers, Numbers, player health becoming tankier overall, or rates of fire getting reworked, we just aren't sure yet. We also don't know what the new baseline time to kills are going to look like in the game. Right now, the majority of Battlebit Remastered's weapons sit in the 180 millisecond to 420 millisecond time to kill window. Whether this gets changed to a, say, 300 millisecond to 600 millisecond time to kill window, or a 450 to 750 millisecond window, we aren't sure there either. We will be doing a lot of videos on all of this when the update drops, and we'll also be streaming it over on Twitch as well. So be sure to get subscribed right here for that content, as well as follow us over on our Twitch channel for some cheeky live streams. It'd be great to see you guys there as well. But depending on how all of this goes down, it's going to have massive implications on the gunplay of this game that is going to see a lot of aggressive players in particular, myself included, have to really check themselves and relearn the pacing that the game will allow. If we go down the player HP in increase or the bullet damage reduction pathway, magazine economy across the game is going to feel a lot harsher. You won't be able to engage as many targets per mag anymore. That much is clear. It's obviously going to make flanking players a little bit less deadly, and it's going to give players on the receiving end of a flank greater opportunity to react to fire, even if it's coming from a completely unknown angle. And before we go any further into the gameplay implications here as well, I want to make one thing very clear. If I'm looking at this from a completely non-biased perspective, I think that a blanket increase in the time to kill of the game will actually be a healthy decision for the game overall. It will add additional opportunity for counterplay and ability for players to get an idea of where threats are and, you know, actually absorb the information the game is giving them rather than dying before even registering where they're being shot from in the first place. However, I can't help but feel that I've also got concerns around how an increase in time to kill across the board will also make this game feel a lot more stagnant in nature, stalemate if you will. Allow me to elaborate. 
There's no other way to word this. Battlebit is chaotic as fuck. Players often clump into massive groupings that just end up headbutting each other and leading to stalemates on multiple maps. Sometimes those stalemates are only broken up by a player or two going on an awesome flank and being the straw that breaks the camel's back, if you will. In those situations, skilled players are obviously relying on fast time to kills to maximize their flank, rely on the confusion to capitalize on their kills, and you know, go on those rampages that we are all too familiar with. With a new time to kill model that makes enemies far more beefier, there's a good chance that those flanks are going to get stalled right in their tracks more often than not, which again may lead to battle bit feeling a bit more stalematey at times. Oki has gone on the record multiple times saying that the game right now is actively punishing you for playing with your team while the undiscovered flanking players are reaping the rewards of the battle bit chaos. The increase in time to kill is designed to address this to a certain extent and I can understand where he's coming from with that point. The increase in time to kill will objectively encourage more team play and will also give players better reaction opportunities to an extent but we'll have to see how it plays out. Again I can see this being a very healthy change for Battlebit, but I can also see some flow on implications that may also change the game for the worse. To make this even more interesting though, we've also seen some footage of the upcoming reworks that are happening to medium range optics. In particular, those being an increase in clarity and a significantly reduced recoil when aiming down the sights, even under full auto fire. This is going to make a lot more weapons far more viable in the long range domain here. So much so to the point where I'm almost worried that long range chip damage is going to become an extreme annoyance when you're trying to play the game here now. There's going to be a lot of incredibly accurate full auto long range fire in this game now if these changes make it live. The developers have emphasized that they are planning to reduce the damage over distance on most weapons to counteract this balance change, but given that healing in this game requires the use of a bandage and is not passive over time, and that you only have so many bandages available to you per life, part of me really does wonder whether this will elongate the average engagement distance and also really discourage any kind of aggressive plays to push objectives and push targets. This may also further stagnate the game in a way, if you will. But just like Billy Mays here, we ain't done yet, folks. A blanket time to kill change and what could be considered an overall average increase in the engagement distance of this game are not the only major gameplay updates that are coming. No, as I said before, this is really a catch-all update, if you will. And that list is even extending all the way down down to the classes of this game. The various classes in the game are also getting some reworks that better slot them into defined roles and playstyles. But these changes are not coming in the form of gadgets and weapon reallocation like you may expect them to. Nope, it's coming in the form of baked in adjustments to health point values and mobility. For example, the assault class is allegedly going to have its core HP reduced by up to half to allow for a faster baked in movement speed, whereas classes like the support are getting the opposite treatment improved HP, but slower mobility. Now, as it stands with the game currently, there's a degree of freedom with the armor customization that lets you achieve this very thing, a degree of differentiation in your mobility and HP on a loadout by loadout level. That much is clear and obvious and is as the game is playing right now. But it sounds like the developers are planning on changing the core values of these classes, regardless of what armor you're wearing, and then having the armor system on top of that allow further customization to the player. Now, obviously, this is going to make certain classes in the game play a certain way, no questions asked. Like, I'm someone that always tried to add some mobility back into my support class to allow for a faster playstyle. I've got a feeling that with these new baked-in changes, that's just no longer going to be the case here, or even possible, even with armor customization on top of that. Assault class players who preferred a slower playstyle, I think you guys are well and truly being forced onto a different class entirely with this update, because, well, no matter how much armor you add, you're still going to have less HP than the rest of the classes in the game, which means that you're just at a straight up disadvantage when it comes to long range skirmishes. So yeah, this is going to lead to some very interesting changes to the gameplay and to class selection for players out there. And while it does give each class a more defined playstyle, I also worry that it's going to only exacerbate Battlebit's already 
let's just say incredibly inconsistent time to kills out there. Practically every target you come across in this game, as it stands right now with the current armor system, requires a different number of bullets to put down. A change like this is only going to further that variety and that inconsistency, which may make the game even harder for newer players to learn. Now, thankfully, right off the back of this, there is a potential solution to this that the devs are exploring that also attempts to solve a deep issue of players feeling like there's lacking feedback when engaging targets and knowing how close they were to killing them. HP bars above enemies. Yep, you heard me right there guys. The developers are exploring adding an option to the game that will allow you to see an enemy's HP once you land a successful hit on them. Now, this I can imagine is not gonna be something that everyone likes to see because it well and truly pushes the game away from the Milsim side and straight into the arcade side of things at Mac 10. But God damn it, guys, I can't help but feel like this is actually a good addition to the game. Ultimately, one of the biggest problems that Battlebit faces is the lacking information and feedback being relayed to the players, as we said before. And that very much falls on a lack of information in shooting at targets as well. Sure, hit markers that tell you that you're hitting head, body, or armor is all well and good and all. But when you have a game with such a variety of different HP pulls and time to kills out there, new players may often feel as though they aren't doing damage in the first place or something is actually broken with the game to the point where their hit reg isn't working. This feature will offer a clear message back to said players saying that yep you actually did do damage to said target and this is how close you were to killing them. Keep working on your aim champion you'll get there eventually. So while it is controversial in nature I actually think it's a good call to add and I'm interested to see how the devs manage it given again how chaotic Battlebit can be with how many players are on the map at once. And just because that that all wasn't enough guys, I have arguably saved the best for last here in this video. The most controversial one straight at the end here so that it's fresh in your minds and we can discuss in the comment section down below which I'm keen to see your thoughts on. And believe it or not, it may even be the one that I'm looking forward to the most out of all these changes. That being that bleeding, the bleeding mechanic of Battlebit Remastered is apparently going away. Yep, you heard that right, two-stage healing is being removed from the game entirely. Well, okay, at least on official servers. When it comes to custom servers, you can still do whatever the hell you want as far as I'm concerned. But that was also another bombshell I wasn't expecting to see, and once again pushes the game just that little bit further away from the Milsim side of the game that it's been, you know, trying to cater to as well. And again, guys, ultimately, I don't actually view this to be such a bad thing. Yeah, the healing mechanic added a bit of flavor to Battlebit that made it somewhat unique, but given the fact that you don't heal passively in Battlebit Remastered and you actually need to take time out of engaging, to heal up over time here. I feel like bleeding and chip damage through building is just another annoyance that new players come across that just kind of artificially slows the game down for them and makes it rather frustrating to play. Especially given that snipers in particular are more likely than not going to cause some kind of healing damage on you and given how prevalent sniping still is in the game, it just sort of continues to exacerbate the issue and bleeding as a result kind of takes away more from the game than it adds in my view. So to see the devs experimenting with this and seeing how it goes, I think it's a welcome addition as well. So yeah, folks, that was a lot to go through. And to be frank, this video turned out a lot longer than I thought it was going to as well. So uh, hope you guys all enjoyed the conversation today. Hit the like button if you did and subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to more Battlebit content. We're also gonna be doing a lot of X Defiance stuff and other FPS videos very, very soon. So get subscribed for a ton more content coming your guys' way. And again, leave some comments in the comments down below guys i'd love to hear your thoughts on all these big gameplay changes coming to battle bit do you like them do you hate them again very keen to hear your thoughts and as always come check out the twitch channel link at the top of the description it's the very first link you'll see hope to see you guys all there for some streams as well it's gonna be a damn pleasure catching up with you all once again guys i hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one